thank you so much for joining today on the launch of Google Auto Gear Shift Report 2020, focused on the digital customer and market trends in Indian automobile industry. I'm Nabil Khan, editor etauto.com. We really thank Google for partnering with us for the launch of one of the most extensive and widely recognized documents. The report had been globally present for a long time, and this is for the first time Google, in association with ET Auto, is launching this India-specific report. The report has expanded its gambit, going beyond the regular digital trends in the new automobiles. This year, the report is going to talk about also pre-owned and used car markets, how the customers and market is behaving in current situation. The report will be launched in two parts, cars and two wheelers, for a deep dive view and understanding of the mega trends in the segment. And it will be discussed with the industry leaders or the captains who are driving this change or who are at the helm of the things. The report has brought out findings which are different from popular beliefs or will be surprised uh, element there will be a lot of surprise element for all of you the report enlists top three drivers or reasons for buying a new cars and one of them the topmost is growing family that is one of the about 39 percent of the people are intending to buy a new car because they have a growing family the other biggest reason is that somebody has got promotion at their work that's the reason Third one is somebody has shifted his or her base from one city to another. So these are the three reasons for new cars as well as used car with the same potentiality. While contrary to the perception, electric vehicle may take a back seat because people will try to trust the tried and tested models, but we have seen huge surge in terms of search for electric vehicles. The other pressing trend in this uh, has come out in terms of people searching to subscribe a car this has especially surged by 150 percent after the pandemic so thus uh, these kind of you know uh, changes that we have noticed that which was not a trend uh, when it comes to indian car market so far we have largely seen digital uh, you know tools as a discovery mean or for the people to research and know about the cars but now for the first time after pandemic we have seen that people are literally looking to buy the cars online means they are ready to spend transact online these are some of the key findings apart from the regular findings that you will understand how digitalization has gripped the indian automobile market how over 95 percent of the car uh, buyers are searching online and this is increasing. We have seen that the digital landscape has changed in India and we are the second largest internet market or country with internet connectivity with over 500 million people connected to it. To get more deep into the report and understand all around what is happening when it comes to customer journey, when it comes to discovery of the dealership or what are the other changes that is shaping the digital uh, uh, digital environment when it comes to automobile industry. I would like to invite Mr. Koshik Das Gupta, Head Insights and Partnership at Google to give an in-depth and elaborate presentation on the report. Koshik, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Naveen. Hello everyone, and thank you all for joining us today. I hope you and your family are keeping safe. I'm really excited to present to you our digital first launch of the Google Auto Gear Shift Report India for 2020. As few of you might know, Auto Gear Shift is a global report done by Google to provide insights into the purchase journey of the four-wheeler buyers. And this time, we have specially customized for India, where we have included two new car buyers, used car buyers, and used car sellers to provide you a more holistic view of the popular consumer. The groundwork has been done by Kanta. It has indeed been a difficult few months. Not only have we had to adjust to business challenges, but as individuals, we have all seen a major change in everyday normal. Today, we will share findings on how the popular buyer is more connected than ever before and their behaviors in the segment. We have broken down the report into three sections. Digital India, as we see today, 
the key consumer insight we find from our study and the business implication for you as brands and dealers. To begin with, let's talk about Digital India, the gateway to future. With more than 500 million internet users today in India, we are the second highest connected country in the world. India has added more than 100 million smartphone users in the last two years. And with COVID, we have seen the average time spent also increase over the last few months. We have seen 33% increase in data consumption along with a drop in data prices. This trend is enabling more users to connect and transact online. Talking about digital transaction, the current pandemic has accelerated this behavior and we are seeing a 75 to 80% increase in UPI transaction over the last few months. With more than 500 million video users coming online by the end of this year, we see this trend impacting this category even more. We will talk more when I cover the video section in our study. While digital behavior is getting accelerated across, we see this pandemic impacting us all. As per our Google mobility report, we still see 36% baseline drop when it comes to public transport. And as per a recent consumer survey, almost 30% of new car and used car intenders said that they will not use public or shared transport. As we look into our platform, we see new trends that are emerging that reflect the ever evolving four-wheeler consumer. For example, we see a 3x growth in EV. We are increasingly seeing searches for buy car online during the COVID times. For the report, we did an extensive survey of 2000 respondents covering 17 cities across the length and breadth of the country, covering tier one, two, and three cities. We have covered three segments, hatchback, sedan, and SUV with a respondent base across male, female, 18 to 40, ACC, A and B. For the used car segment, we covered both organized as well as unorganized dealer. The respondents were chosen based on their access to internet. And we did a 12 month look back for three segments. That is, if they bought a car, a new car, a used car, or if they have sold a car in the last 12 months. In addition, we conducted Google consumer survey and analyzed Google data since COVID. to capture the here and now of the four-wheeler, buyer, and seller. Let me now share with you the findings of our study. To understand how four-wheeler consumers engage with brands across the purchase journey, we have broken down the report into four sections. The big shift we have seen, how does it impact the final purchase in connecting the dots? And there is a risk of brand replacement. And lastly, how tech is the big catalyst that helps brands to build the edge. Let's now try to understand why India buys a four-wheeler and what life stages they are in when they get a four-wheeler. As per our study, when it comes to new cars, 52% of the respondents cited an improvement of financial situation. Similarly, 49% of the used cars. For used car seller, a decline in financial situation was cited as the main reason as to why they sell a car. That being said, there are other life stages that play an important part as well. For example, for new cars, 39% cited a growing family, 16% as promotion, and 14% as moving to a new place. For a used car, we see a similar trend. For a used car seller, the same three stages come up, but with a different percentage. I spoke of the connected user earlier, and we see a 95% of the new car buyers are now digitally influenced, an increase of five percentage points over the last study we did in 2018. And the same is across all the three segments of hatchback, sedan, and SUV. The digital influence is reflected for used car segments with almost 100% of the used car sellers researching online before selling their car. For the organized used car segment, the digital influence was at a 98%. Let me now share with you what are the lead resources these segments rely on. For new car buyers, online was at a 92% and they relied on search engine, followed by 84% on video. Similarly, 68% relied on friends and families as the primary offline resource. For tier two buyers, online video jumped to an 89%. For used car buyers, 92% relied on search engine followed by 81% on a video. Similarly, 63% relied on friends and family as the primary offline resource. We also saw vehicle review sites and aggregator websites play a lot more important role for the used car buyer. For the used car seller, 86% relied on search engine, followed by 67% on video. Similarly, 
71% relied on friends and family as a primary offline resource and plays a much important role than the other two buyer categories. Sellers who sell through organized channels in tier two and three use a lot more of the video. When we asked what type of online websites or apps they rely on, YouTube emerged as a number two for the new car buyer, a 33 percentage point increase from 2018. Tier one consumer had a more varied research behavior, whereas the tier two consumer were more influenced by YouTube. For used car buyers, we saw a similar trend. However, we saw a higher number of buyers using organized dealers. We see a similar trend in tier two as we did with the new car buyers. Used car sellers rely a, a lot more on Google search. Tier two and three saw an increased preference to YouTube. When we did a survey to check if the trends have changed in COVID, the behavior actually remains the same. As mentioned, we saw YouTube being extensively used as part of the purchase journey across all segments. We found out that nine out of 10 new car buyers will at least take one action after watching a video. This was a three percentage point higher than what we saw in our earlier study. The behavior was similar to all segments across hatchback, sedan, and SUV. In terms of action, we see 48% of them will actually visit a dealer website. A similar number will locate a dealer or schedule a test drive or ask for a price quote. 31% used a vehicle configurator and a similar number research for financing offers. For used car, eight out of 10 took at least one action. This number was similar across organized and unorganized sectors. More than half of them will locate a dealer and ask for a price quote. Other actions are visiting a dealer, scheduling a test drive, or researching for a financial or lease offers. For the used car seller, the number was again nine out of 10, who at least took one action. Similarly, for organized and unorganized dealers. Half of them will either locate a dealer or find a way to evaluate the best resale value for their cars. So what do they watch on YouTube? We see three themes emerge. The first one being design, the second one being in action, vehicle safety or performance content. And the third one are reviews and ads from manufacturers. The same is used for used car buyer as well. For used car sellers, the content was slightly different where we saw contents like tips for getting the best value, how to sell on various platforms, or how dealers are evaluating the resale value. For all the three segments, the consumer told us they found YouTube as a source for all their answers. In the next section, we will share our findings on the next steps, that is visiting the dealership. Our study shows 72% of users search to find the dealer, a jump of 12 percentage points over 2018. They used either the search engine, dealer website, or the brand website to find the same. For used car buyers and sellers, 70% research to find the dealer. We see aggregator website feature here for the used car sellers. Once they found the dealer, one out of four will take an action. Where only 15% fill up a form, the majority will either call or visit the dealer after their research. Where, as when we look at the used car buyer, we see half of them will take an action after reaching the dealer website. 65% will either call and 35% will visit the dealership. Let's talk about how users are selecting and finalizing brands as per our study. The study showed that three out of five new car buyers select more than two brands and almost 50% of them have little to no idea what the brand model was. For used car buyers, half of them will select almost three brands. When it comes to taking or completing the purchase from start to end, 85% decide within two months and close to 30% of them will decide within two weeks. For used car buyers and sellers, around 90% of them will decide within two months with a third deciding in two weeks. Lastly, 61% of new car buyers decide after taking only one test drive, which makes it imperative for brands to be in the consideration set. 
As I mentioned earlier, today technology is creating and enabling the four-wheeler buyers to engage and make his decision. In this section, we will share more insights on the usage and the expectations. 53% of our respondents used a car configurator to find their personalized variants. From new car, this was a 15% jump from 2018. The numbers are similar across all the other segments. The car buyer is a lot more aware of the connected vehicle, and 82% are likely to pay a premium for the same, the highest at 85% for SUVs. Seven out of 10 new car respondents said 360 degree video or VR videos would help them convince to buy even without a test drive. The data is similar for used car buyers as well. Another interesting trend that comes out is that half of the new car buyers would consider to buy online, a 10 percentage point increase. Tier two buyers were surprisingly more likely if this option was available. We see a 50% number across all segments of vehicle as well. For used car buyers, the data was as high as 62%. And for used car sellers, 66% said that they would be consider selling online if an option was available. In the end, I would like to leave some thoughts with you from our study, highlighting some key takeaways and business implications it will have. 95% of car buyers and used car sellers go online. Our recommendation, be where your customers are. Through the entire journey, enabling them and making the journey as frictionless as possible. More than 80% of four-wheeler buyers watch online videos. With nine out of 10, they can action after watching an online video. This trend is across tier one, two, and three cities. Our recommendation, leverage video and drive action. While digital influence is no longer a metro phenomena, tier two and three city car buyers are strongly influenced by digital. Our recommendation, plan and engage meaningfully across all their consumer journey, irrespective of from which city they're coming from. The fourth, seven out of 10 discovered their dealer online, with a majority will call, visit or fill up a form. Our recommendation, there are multiple expectations from the consumer when it comes to the dealer. The journey is not linear and the consumer is more likely to call and visit or filling up a form. Measure this omnichannel behavior while you get your dealers online. And the last, 50% of the car buyers are willing to buy a car or sell a car online. Our recommendation, we've seen technology as the big disruptor and coupled with the current pandemic, the connected auto consumer is more likely to use technology to engage with brands and finalize their choice. Do not miss out on this opportunity. In the end, I would like to thank you for your time. I hope you found the study as interesting as we have. We have tried to compress the finding for this session. However, if you need a more dedicated or detailed version, please feel free to reach out to any of us. Thank you once again for joining us today. With that, I hand it over to Nagin for the next section. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kaushik, for such an elaborate and in-depth uh, uh, presentation on the report today. I'm sure the industry uh, audience and also those who are looking at understanding the Indian automobile industry and specifically, especially the digital trend, how it is uh, shaping, will uh, get a lot of uh, uh, insight from it and they will get benefited. So let's take the uh, session forward. And uh, now I would like to uh, begin with the panel discussion that we have planned for today. Uh, the panel discussion is on the backdrop or uh, going to discuss this very report along with uh, the changing uh, uh, B2B in auto buyers and how brands are adopting to it. So we have a very uh, good power pack panel, those who are really on the driver's seat and those who are driving these changes uh, at the large automobile companies. And especially since today's panel is on cars, let me introduce to you, uh, Mr. Shashank Srivastava, who is executive director of MSIL, India's largest uh, passenger vehicle manufacturer. We are also joined by Mr. Uh, Tarun Garg, who is director of sales and marketing at Hyundai, the country's second largest uh, passenger vehicle manufacturer. 
and we are also joined by the new entrant who has uh, set the market ablaze, Mr. Manohar Bhatt, who is head sales and marketing at Kia. Uh, we are also joined by Mr. Saurabh Kedia, director of Shri Automotive, a leading uh, automobile dealer, to give a dealer perspective on how digital adoption is taking shape there. We are also joined by Mr. Bhaskar, Bhaskar Ramesh, who is director a technology FMCG auto media and entertainment at Google India. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining the auto panel discussion today. It's uh, indeed a pleasure to host you oh, all here you. and discuss this uh, pertinent report. Yeah, so uh, before we start uh, the panel discussion, I would like to begin with Bhaskar. Bhaskar, what is your initial comment uh, looking at the report? How do you see the digitalization has uh, gripped automobile buyers uh, over the years? And what's new? Uh, you have what are the new major trends that you have uh, seen in this report, and how is it going to shape the future of automobile uh, sales and marketing? Thank you, uh, thank you, Nabil, and uh, uh, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you, Shushank San. Uh, Tarun San and uh, Tarun and uh, I think uh, Manohar uh, and Mr. Kedia, I think it's a pleasure to be uh, having all of you on the panel. So uh, the way I look at it, uh, this is a uh, auto gear shift is one of our uh, premier reports actually we do globally. The last report was done in 2018 when auto industry was at an all time high. And then 2019, 2020, there has been a massive uh, uh, disruption the, in the industry. and Probably 2021, uh, uh, this actually sets the pace and getting the pulse of the cons consumer is, is very important. And this report does a great job of capturing that pulse uh, across uh, four wheelers uh, and two wheelers and used cars. And we have uh, gone very exhaustive uh, on the insights. So two or three fundamental uh, changes that, that we see, what this report suggests are, number one, I think auto as an industry was uh, looking at digital in three broad buckets, right? Number one, digital as a medium, you know, it is just as a medium, the like TV, like print, right? Like, are we doing enough on that front? Uh, and the second bucket is actually like digital as a data, uh, data science and uh, insights. So uh, I think uh, there are, uh, we have uh, both Maruti and Hyundai here who invested very heavily in building a digital infrastructure at its very core. Uh, and also Kia, who were actually launched launched with the digital first approach. Uh, and uh, the third is actually like the whole business transformation, right? We are seeing the whole auto industry moving towards a uh, dealer digitization at the very core. So all these large trends are actually being combined and we have a great numbers to it. So number one, from a media point of view, uh, more than 95% of all car buyers are actually uh, making their decisions uh, on digital. Uh, and this number is almost as good as any other market developed market in the world. Now, here uh, in this context, uh, uh, the good the question that we have is that, hey, when 95% of all decisions are actually happening on digital, uh, when globally, uh, you know, there are almost 50, 55% of the, uh, of, sorry, monies are also happening on digital, uh, into digital, I think there is a headroom for, driving digital leads and driving digital branding to a whole new level and that opportunity exists in India. The second is, uh, I think, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, auto is actually becoming a lot more performance driven. Uh, things like uh, lead generation, cost per lead, uh, you know, dealer centric, uh, 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 dealer centric initiatives are actually happening in such a strong pace that that data is a gold mine. You know, just the way an airline is an industry or a bank is an industry talk about lifetime value of a customer. Uh, I think in, in an old world, we can talk about driving awareness through new launches and then, you know, few people walk into a dealership to, ship to buy a car. But I think uh, companies who are actually looking at a V-shape recovery are the ones who have invested in this uh, data uh, infrastructure. And I think there is an opportunity on that front. And third, a lot of evolving business models and 72% uh, 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 of the uh, uh, customers expect dealers to have their own websites. So uh, I think if OEMs are digitizing, I would say dealerships have to digitize even faster, right? Because an OEM is creating a brand uh, uh, 
and the product, but the dealer has actually has to acquire customers. So I would say, uh, while there has been a good progress with one third of the dealers on digital, there is a large in impetus required to uh, truly uh, get to a uh, hundred percent digitization. And with more tier two and tier three uh, uh, customers mimicking the urban metro customers in terms of their path to purchase of auto, uh, more and more uh, dealer digitization efforts and video first uh, uh, strategies are required to win over that uh, that customer. Overall, I would say that that 2021 is a very pivotal year uh, because uh, we have all signals pointing out to an auto recovery. Uh, the, the, the queries are back to pre-COVID days. Uh, we are seeing boom in terms of both inquiries and, uh, and, and retail. So this study gives us a lot more confidence that truly auto is one, the best traditional industry which is transforming rapidly more than any other. I'll take a pause here and and I, I would let the experts also share this. Uh, thank you, Bhaskar, for giving a quick uh, roundup of the uh, report. I'll now go to the uh, people who really drive the automobile market and how do they see, can they validate what are the findings that has come out of this report. Shashank, I'll come to you. As the report suggests that people are trying to move away from shared mobility, which was a huge trend in the pre-COVID era. People are also trying to avoid public transportation in such a scenario. And we have also seen the people who are buying cars, some of them are trying to buy because of the uh, the uh, fear of you know contamination or infection that could come up. So people are trying to conserve cash also, but buy personal mobility in such a scenario. Do you see that there is going to be a higher demand for low variance vehicles. And also we have seen that the inquiries are back to almost 80% to the pre-COVID levels. Looking at all these uh, you know, trends, do you see that the year 2021 will be almost equal to the 2019 when it comes to volume? I think it will be do, uh, doing better than that. Yeah, so first first of all, let me uh, um, comment on uh, the findings which uh, was uh, revealed today in the study uh, as uh, done by uh, Google. Uh, much of it uh, completely, um, uh, you know, I would agree and it, our internal research also indicates uh, a similar uh, sort of uh, uh, results. And uh, uh, and I think uh, uh, basically uh, the increased digitalization is because we have now a better infrastructure, larger number of uh, 500 million, as the study said, plus uh, internet users, 350 million smartphone users. Uh, we have greater inter internet penetration now. It's almost 39%. Now it's going up to 62%, which is global. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, it's very clear that digitalization is here uh, to stay. By the way, it was there very much before the pandemic as well. But I think it has accelerated after the pandemic. Clearly for Maruti Suzuki, for example, the web inquiries, which were just about 3-4% uh, for four years back. Uh, last year, they were about 15-16%, but this year they have uh, close to 40%. You receive 12.5 lakh inquiries every month. Five lakh of them are now uh, digital. So completely agree with this. And I think during the course of the panel discussion, we will uh, come back to that uh, report uh, which uh, Google released. Uh, on your question about the bounce back of the of the industry, uh, I would say yes, uh, uh, the industry and uh, me also, we are uh, uh, pleasantly surprised by the extent of the bounce back. So while um, there was uh, certainly an element of, uh, of uh, uh, demand which was pent up, and I think it still exists, uh, we did see month on month improvement. Remember, we are nowhere near the last year's level also. And last year, by the way, was uh, about 80% less than the previous year. But nevertheless, the bounce back has been pretty good. Uh, rural bounce back has been much better. And you are right, the shared mobility, you know, people are sort of ignoring that and sort of getting away from it. Uh, there is a demand for, uh, for, for uh, personal transport, which is positive for the industry. However, on the other hand, uh, income levels are expected to be lower. And I think that is where the contradiction is. And therefore, we do find there would be a, a, a demand shift towards the lower end. Uh, there are, of course, I am quite aware in SUV, for example, there is a big jump 
and that i think has been brought out because of the introduction of several new products in that category uh, in such times uh, when the conspicuous consumption actually is converting to conscious consumption i think people are buying more out of, of functionality and we do see first time buyers going up some of the things which we do also find is that the replacement buying has come down uh, probably because although the demand for uh, used cars has gone up also and the other thing is that people are uh, in such times gravitate towards the more reliable and the more known brands and i think we are finding uh, some uh, some uh, um, uh, proof and some evidence of that as well in the current uh, uh, situation uh, as regards the forward uh, demand uh, and whether we would achieve uh, the last year or the previous year it's a open question i think uh, car buying is a discretionary purchase in economic terms it requires positive sentiment uh, and if we find that the sentiment uh, the, uh, on the virus front is negative it could uh, negatively impact the demand and in any case if you see the last uh, uh, 20 25 years of data there is a high correlation between the car demand and the per capita growth in income and so ultimately the demand will depend on how quickly the economy bounces back and how quickly the economic fundamentals improve uh, and therefore oems are a little um, uh, apprehensive of commenting when we will reach that uh, level as people say uh, whether it will be a l shaped or it will be a, a v shaped or it will be a w shaped uh, some people are now talking of a k shape and a bathtub recovery uh, or a nike swoosh uh, i i i i personally uh, pre prefer the o shaped which means that uh, really nobody knows what the shape of the recovery will be uh, so, but we are very uh, optimistic given that the current bounce back has been good and uh, yeah, let's see uh, how it unfolds from here on the virus front as well as on the economic front. Thank you. Thank you, Shashank. I'll come to you, Tarun, as the second largest passenger vehicle manufacturer. How do you see the bounce back in the market? Do you think that we'll be able to achieve uh, 2019 volumes uh, in 2021? <laughs> Thank you, uh, yeah. uh, Like Shashank, I would also agree that uh, we are also very pleasantly surprised. Uh, 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 frankly speaking, although, you know, as you know, Hyundai was one of the first companies to start production post the unlock. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we have been always saying that the resilience in the Indian car market has always been very high. You know, if you see the past as well, so, uh, mm -hmm. uh, things improved. Uh, uh, May was better than April, June was better than May, July was better than June, August was better than July, and September uh, should be better than August as well. So that is the first part of it. Finally, uh, it is due to the pent-up demand, I also agree, and it was shift to... The, uh, one crit critical aspect here which we have observed at Hyundai is that while everybody believes that customers will, you know, maybe hesitant to spend money and, you know, maybe down downsize their choice what we find is uh, that is not the case and the reason for that is that as long as hyundai uh, as a company is able to customer give choice to the customers in terms of new products uh, for example we have given choice uh, new data the venue the imt option in the venue the new verna has come in the new has come in uh, you know so we are seeing a traction in addition to the cars a huge traction in this segment as well so, which clearly demonstrates that uh, that customer is willing to buy even I mean, not only just for mobility, but their aspirations are still intact. And uh, as long as they get a good product, as long as they get a choice of a powertrain, and I think this is also very important. And here I like to share some very interesting data point that you know when we see these three prestigious segments of the Indian car market, say the more than four meter SUV, you know April to August numbers. We could see that Hyundai was able to get a market leadership, you know, the new Creta with the new Creta. Also, in the less than four meter SUV, the new venue was able to the venue was able to get a leadership. And in the more than four and the the Verna was able to get the leadership. Now, why why did this happen? I think one big reason for that was that our ability to really offer the customers in addition to petrol BSX and turbo BSX, but also a very strong option in the diesel BS6 as well, which the customers are buying. So, uh, so th that has really added to the numbers. And some of the diesel numbers are as high as 
you know, 60% in Creta or say 35% in Verna and Venue. So customers are willing to, uh, you know, spend money and buy good product, latest technologies. The response to our new IMT technology has been very good. The response to our automatics, whether it is a DCT, uh, you know, or the AT or the AMT or the IMT, been very good. So customers are really buying, you know, across categories of uh, products. You know, uh, so that is, I think, a very, very good sign. So we are hopeful uh, uh, about the future as well. I, we are approaching the festival season. Uh, I think we can clearly see the bookings have gone up in the past couple of weeks. So customers are uh, really looking forward to buying in the festival season. On our part, we are making sure that the vehicles are reaching the dealerships because every year what we find is that, you know, however you may produce or be prepared, still customers, you know, tend to not find the vehicle of their choice. So this time there is a one month gap between Shrad and the Navratras. So I think it has given us a good opportunity to be to be prepared. The second aspect, and Abil, I would like to also mention here is that the uh, you know uh, the, this thing about customers wanting to have a personal mobility has also given rise to you know things like subscription, where I think it is also mentioned. You mentioned about 150 percent uh, you know uh, increase in queries for subscription. And I think Hyundai has uh, Hyundai was able to offer subscription about one year back, and we can clearly see that some traction is coming for subscription because some customers who don't want to buy but they still want to have the themselves and don't want to share it, and I think subscription provides them that opportunity as well. So all in all, the strategy of in the consideration of every Indian who want who has a need for a mobility, I think that is a very clear strategy for Hyundai that to be in the consideration set of every Indian who has any mobility need. So whether it is through ownership, whether it is through lease, whether it is through subscription, whether it is through diesel, whether it is through petrol, CNG, electric, SUV, I think we are there everywhere. And I think that is what is really helping us to increase numbers. Thank you. Manohar, I would like to come to you. Uh, like Sashank mentioned that uh, the people are moving towards more reliable or already uh, legendary brands uh, rather than moving to new. But looking at your company's performance, we see that people are more open to explore and go to the new brand. They are rather uh, more concerned about the product design or the kind of offering that the company is uh, uh, putting forward. So in such a scenario, what, how are you upping your, the game in terms of uh, tapping the customer digitally? What are the tools or what are the mechanisms that you are employing to stay ahead of the curve that we have in the automobile industry? And Abhil, uh, like what Shashank was saying, yes, there is, I think overall in the industry, there is a trend towards uh, vehicles that are more affordable and uh, the, the smaller cars. But then for us in Kia, we are seeing a slightly different trend in the sense that maybe because we are a new company and uh, well, we are young at heart and so are our customers. But what we are seeing actually is uh, there is a lot of traction for the top end uh, variants also, which uh, most of all the latest features, your connected cars, your UO connected car features, and uh, all the uh, I mean uh, all the what, industry leading features. So we are seeing a lot of uh, traction there, which frankly like. Uh, one would think that in a slightly uh, difficult situation like this, customers would prefer to maybe go in for a more affordable uh, variant. But we're not really seeing that happen so much. What can happen for the center, like the top end, is still got a lot of traction. The same thing we're seeing in the Sonnet also. Having said that, we've got more than 30,000 bookings for the for the Sonnet so far, and things look uh, pretty good. Like uh, the way we have done it is, yes, we have uh, we have actually concentrated a lot on the digital uh, marketing part of it. For the CELTOS also, for example, we were uh, very much on the, uh, for example, in YouTube also, we were, uh, we had the largest number of downloads and also our uh, video was rated, I think, number one in Asia by Google. Uh, so we had, uh, at that time, I believe, around 35% of our bookings also came online at that time for the CELTOS. Uh, strangely, yes, in spite of the COVID period, I got more bookings for the Sonnet on the first day and the first couple of days, but we didn't have so much on digital at that time, which I attribute to people actually uh, recognizing us as a more, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, established brand by now, and also seeing that our brick and mortar operations are well established and well known to the people. 
so I think that is some what do you call it uh, limitation of saying uh, limitation of saying that people will move totally towards digital and uh, it's going to be all digital only. I think there's a lot of uh, scope for the brick and mortar shops also to do better. And for example, in the sonnet, if I take the uh, example of the sonnet, we had almost one million people go to the dealer uh, dealer pages to visit after coming to our site. So it's a huge number actually. They come to the dealer, dealer site after that. They have a visit also after that because they have to probably sort of kick the tires of a new product, check it out physically in the sun rather than just go to a website and do the virtual showroom experience. In the sonnet, I think, yes, we did well for ourselves. We had uh, more than, I think, 380 million video views of our uh, of our uh, ads in the on YouTube. And also, we are uh, very much into the engagement also. On this. We got a very high SNS engagement. So we actually, okay, the other thing what we had done is initially when we started the CentOS itself, we had a fully digital uh, customer journey possible, right? Right from the time he inquired over the vehicle book, to book the vehicle, to finance it through one of the leading finance companies to actually invoicing and getting the vehicle delivered at his doorstep also. So we had started that and I think it has had a good, you know, the people wouldn't have taken the full journey online. But it gave a good impression, I think, of our uh, entire process as being young and actually nearer to the customer. So these are some of the things I think we has, which has made us successful, along with the fact that our vehicles are, yes, the most feature uh, feature loaded and industry leading in most of the, well, many of the stuff that we've got on. And of course, like uh, as someone else said, we also, we got all the powertrain options possible your petrol diesel and everything all that has helped us a big way in actually establishing ourselves as a very desired brand in india so nabil so, uh, if i uh, uh, in fact if i may add uh, to uh, what manohar was saying in fact the report also suggests that the number of brands being considered by car buyer before walking into dealership in 2018 was two but in 2020 it is 2.4 with more models and hatchbacks and more in SUVs, I think that uh, number of brands being considered even before walking into the store may also has gone up uh, just to building on the thought. Yeah, options, more options they're exploring. Uh, Shashank and Tarun, I'll yes, come to you again. Uh, obviously, the report talks about there's an acceleration in terms of digital adoption when it comes to buying a car. Uh, you, as a car seller, what are the marketing technology you are adopting? How are you building your marketing uh, technology or combination of marketing uh, in terms of digital versus traditional? Media? And what are the metrics are you implying to assess your ROI? And how, what are the findings? How adaptable or how profitable the digital marketing is becoming for you? Hey, should I go first? Yes. Yeah, so, um, um, uh, Nabil, uh, uh, first let me try to decode uh, uh, that uh, demand patterns which is referred to Tarun and by Manohar. I think there is uh, uh, not a ev evaporation of demand in any segment, but rather a telescoping downwards. So it is just possible that uh, they, the, there are segments where you will see a large de demand, uh, which would have been probably uh, uh, in, in a higher segment earlier. That's one point. However, to your question, yes, Maruti Suzuki has uh, realized, and I think all OEMs uh, have very quickly uh, realized, not just today, but three years back, that there is a requirement, there is a big shift uh, through the digital route for consumers. Uh, and uh, the reason why we already discussed uh, why uh, people are going towards the uh, digital mode, maybe cheaper data, more smartphones, more internet penetration, and so on. Uh, for uh, OEMs, of course, the reasons for uh, going into it is one obviously is consumer convenience and consumer choice. Uh, it's also about building marketing efficiencies. Uh, basically, you, uh, digital allows personalization. Uh, it allows measurement, which and allows therefore for a better ROIs uh, and something which is a, of a greater confidence uh, rather than the spray and pray sort of uh, thing which happens generally in the media uh, investments, which traditionally we have been doing. Uh, and of course, we get to know more about the customers, their choices. We have a good view of the customer across social media. And we can therefore use all this for decision making uh, to influence their decision making. 
Uh, to your point of what are the uh, things which uh, should be applied uh, employed by OEMs and what Maruti Suzuki is doing? Well, basically, first of all, uh, we have to build some sort of a digital asset and uh, also onboarding tools. Uh, digital assets is like, for example, in case of Maruti Suzuki or any OEM could be the websites. Uh, one uh, for which, uh, for example, Marty Suzuki is using five eight four for uh, both uh, uh, because it's scalable, because uploading time is better, because uh, uh, you can have real time personalization as well. We are doing. Uh, uh, we are taking a help of Google uh, Analytics uh, for uh, for web analytics. You have Google tools which we do, and of course, you need to have uh, for media purposes programmatic buying as well. Uh, so while today we have uh, programmatic buying based uh, largely on uh, on on metrics of direct response, we are hoping that that rationalization would happen through the brand KPIs as well. Second, we are using extensively the funnel based uh, um, uh, marketing through the digital thing, not only just on the upper end for brand awareness, but also on the lower end through hyper local through dealer websites, uh, basically for prospect conversion, etc. Third, we have to build social infrastructure and we have done that, whether it is in the form of sprinkler or in terms of uh, getting um, you know, social listening tools and so on and so forth, helping us both in uh, terms of, uh, of, of complaint resolution as also to know the trends of what the consumers really think, getting consumer insights. And of course, I think Bhaskar mentioned it uh, quite clearly, where uh, actually 66% of the consumers are now looking at uh, which place to buy. Uh, through the web, which means a dealer location is uh, actually being explored by in two out of three uh, customers are looking through the website to uh, locate the dealer. And that's why it's very important that dealers should have website and they should have presence on the digital landscape. And I'll give you an example, Nabil, and you know it very well over the years. Marty Suzuki has been looking at how many dealers we have, how many network we have, what infrastructure, how many cities we are present, which village, which uh, district, and so on. We are now looking at the digital landscape also. So we have built almost 3,000 touch points through uh, uh, the GMB or Facebook or uh, even um, uh, the dealer websites. Uh, I think uh, a combination of all this infrastructure, uh, both at the analytic level as well as the website level, and also trying to get all this together to have uh, both the transactional and the interactional data, interactional data to be put together in, a, in a, what we call the SVOC, the single view of customer, giving us a chance for predictive modeling as well, which inquiries can be you know, quickly, uh, quickly converted and so on and so forth. That, in a sense, is what Marty Suzuki, and I am guessing that almost all OEMs will be doing it. One additional point which Marty Suzuki is doing uh, uh, is that we're getting even the finance part uh, into the uh, touch points which can be converted into uh, digital. So out of 26 touch points, I keep mentioning in almost all forums, 26 touch points, 21 are digitalized. We now have the test drive, which is possible with the 360 degree uh, cameras and also VR, AR, to give even the test drive, uh, a, a sense of test drive. As also the other parts, which is the finance part, which Marty Suzuki is also doing on the digital front. So I think com combination of this should help us uh, in, uh, in, in, and we have taken a lead in that, and we are uh, hoping that uh, we will go along with the trend and uh, try to make it as uh, convenient to consumers as possible. And later on, after sales also for consumer lo brand loyalty, as well as for consumer advocacy, we are trying to build post-sales system also integrated with our CRM systems. Looking at the digital penetration, uh, the way we see that everything is moving into digitalization uh we have seen the global average spent on digital marketing on digital media or digital uh, for promoting your uh, brand or reaching out to customer has been average 45 to 50 percent whereas in india it's still around 25 percent almost half of the global average though maruti spends about over 30 percent Hyundai is also doing well but do you think, looking at this report that we have revealed today, is your media mix in terms of spending is going to change? And what would be that mix if you could share? Give us some sense, uh, both of you. Yeah, yes, Nabil, I'll keep it short. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you're right. Uh, and frankly, this journey towards the media mix being uh, in favor of digital, mm -hmm. I think had been about two, three years back itself. And I remember the time 
retail used to be uh, seven eight percent of the total, and it has only been going up. In fact, almost doubling uh, every year. I would not like to share any specific uh, data here, but I like to uh, tell you that uh, at Hyundai we are not very far away from the global uh, standards, and there are clear cut reasons for it. You look, a media mix is a reflection of the of the of the changing customer in the country, you know. And when you can clearly see that the customer is evolving, in fact, you would have seen that Hyundai is one of the pioneers in in digital online car sales. Uh, our click to buy piloted when in India at least a pandemic. Uh, we never knew that pandemic is going to come. We had a pilot and we had launched it all India in March, and now we at least. Uh, it, it it remains uh, you know one of the first and only end to end online car buying platform in the country where uh, people are going and they are exploring the car uh, they are making finance they are taking finance they are making payments and in fact they have the option of taking the delivery at home as well here the dealer's role still remains very important because they can get a sales consultant you know uh, assigned to the customer and so dealer is actually owning the customer still that is first part of it the second part of it is that now as an oem we have to enhance this experience of the customer you know which is getting online i think that is a very very critical part and that is where sometimes the digital media spend also comes in so we have to see can we provide uh, uh, you know a chatbots to the customers can we provide <laughs> video to the customer you know can we provide a 3d configurator also as a part of the ctv now can we provide some special schemes to the customer like for example we have a you know a waiving of the of the processing fee for finance if, if a customer buys through click to buy so the whole idea is because people ask us that what are the numbers you know what are the numbers of online sales so while in terms of inquiries all of us say and yes 20 25 30 35 40% of the inquiries may be digital but how many customers are actually converting or doing this whole thing digitally that there is still a long way to go and that is where i believe all of us have to do a lot of work how we can enhance this experience how we can reach more and more customers through our means and here i think i'll bring a very important aspect again of the media mix as you know you know we had launched some three products you know the creta the verna and the tucson during this pandemic and you would have seen normally we would have launched them you know we would have hired a hall and you know, maybe we would have called some 200 journalists and maybe we would have displayed and launched the cars but because of this pandemic and because of our move toward digital we had this event called the next dimension and where in a 35 minute capsule we were able to showcase all these three great products to to customers and i'm happy to report that you know we have had more than 200 million views of this event along uh, alone in on, uh, amongst the uh, various digital uh, platforms of hyundai yeah. to more than 200 million. so just see the power of digital because you talked about roi nabil i think this kind of an roi where you are reaching at one stroke to 200 million customers and more i think is something which would have never imagined would have never imagined to have i think this pandemic has thrown open some doors which were closed mm -hmm. it has made the journey towards digital and i promise you an answer the digital spend i would say that even though overall marketing spend this year for everybody because of obvious reasons because we were sh shut down for two months would have come down the digital spends have gone up dramatically over last year even even though the overall spends have come down so i think i think i have fairly answered your question thank you thank you tarun i'll come to you uh, uh, mr bhat you are a young uh, company young brand uh, you have you don't have any legacy you know issue you can choose your mediums how does it look like for you when you look at the media spent where is going to be your largest chunk just brief answer yeah i think uh, shashank and tarun have answered this question fairly is so one like the digital uh, the importance of digital is growing year on year so the last 10 years has been going up consistently and for us at kia also like i answered earlier digital is a very very important uh, means of communicating to our customers so i will answer it slightly differently rather than speaking on the digital advertising and all that i would again talk of the digital journey of the customer like i said we were the first to have a, a, a entirely online digital experience for the customer with right from enquiry till the final retail and the delivery of the vehicle we were the first to do it so we didn't expect that okay we'll be getting a lot of customers on this but it was basically to signal our intent and to show our uh, uh, youth in terms of thought 
that we can uh, we we will be heart breaking in this and we'll give you a world class uh, so it also extends to our after sales also now after sales for example we got this app and also we are developing something like uh, you know we can for a pickup and drop a customer can track he can ask for a pickup and drop and then track where his vehicle was the entire thing is uh, we made fully digital now of course other aspects of it as to the the billing of it all that is anyway that is a very basic thing it has to be uh, digital but we are trying to like i said the idea is to make it more and more digital and more seamless for the customer so that uh, we are as uh, or, as per his way of uh, doing business and doing things uh, before i go to bhaskar to understand what will drive i'll just bring in uh, quickly shashank you want to make a comment on this if you could make brief comment then i'll go to gedia mr gedia uh, no, I'm fine. I think basically, basically agree with uh, with Tarun and uh, Manohar. Uh, a digital spends would be a reflection of uh, what the consumers want. India, I think it is uh, some study shows 30% is digital of the media time spent. 59% is still television. Uh, but I think uh, our uh, this thing is going to be higher, as Tarun said. Even though the overall spends might be less, our digital spends uh, should be higher. Thank you, Shant. Sort of uh, the same question with you. We asked how are you preparing yourself uh, to be digitally so savvy? Now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, my take on digital is slightly different. While I fully agree with the uh, report, Google report, which came out and which speaks about most of our customers, 95% and above, actually looking for cars online researching and then coming up with half made up mind of couple of brands and then deciding between the two or three when they're interacting with the dealership mm. but i think uh, a lot more at dealerships end has gone in on the digital side whether it is the in showroom experience which has a lot more digital capability today than what it had even two years back or whether it is the interaction of the sales executive with the customer for that also a lot of digital elements have come in whether it is the leaflet which used to go in a printed format and now it's all online we give a lot more uh, we are able to showcase a lot of vehicles online through the whatsapp video call or through uh, a google inside view of the showroom so you know a lot of things are able we are able to do at the back end and which actually helps uh, the customer experience far more than what it used to be Apart from that, on the service side as well, a lot of digital uh, actions have been taken in order to ease out the customer journey. And I believe that the final decision making of between the two cars or between the three cars, I think that decision happens at the dealership. And that at times creates a key differentiator between having a good dealer or not having a good dealer at a particular location. And these are uh, uh, some of the things that have happened at our end. Of course, uh, there's a lot more spend on account of digital lead creation in order to, uh, in a, about online spend with regards to our website marketing, YouTube videos, uh, which has also come out in the uh, Google report, which talks about a lot more people are looking at YouTube actually before finalizing a product, which was earlier never the case. These things are also being spent on, for example, post COVID, if you look at dealerships, we were uh, we were doing on an average some 200 plus activity at my dealership. And today we are not doing maybe not even five or seven activities because it is physically uh, very challenging. So, but we have replaced that with a lot more digital activities. And that has helped us to continue to do well in the markets that we operate in. And that is what we have seen at most dealerships across the country. So, of mm. course, digital is the way forward. And uh, we are also excited about how things can change. For example, Sushank sir said that, you know, uh, we were talking about physical infrastructure and now we are talking about digital infrastructure of the dealership in order to be closer to the customer. And that makes a difference. And that's what we are also working on. Thank you, Saurabh. I'll come to you, uh, Bhaskar, and I'll try to understand why a lot of people are still shying away from spending on digital in automobile space uh what are the constraints and what are the way forward to resolve those constraints if you could share yeah, i think uh no thank you and uh, honestly it's it's great to see uh uh the leadership uh, of auto industry so uh believing in digital right uh honestly in my view 
spends nabil are an outcome okay we can't plan for spends right spends are an outcome as tarun has rightly said right like spends generally follow where the consumer intention actually is going however two points are very important for me in this report i want to state that number one not only that the journey is online 100 percent online also, but the journey is starting online if you look at 2018 report 35 percent of the consumer journey was starting on digital right that is one third almost but the 2020 the same number is almost 60 percent so 60 percent of the times the consumer journey is starting on digital and that's the point of market entry that any as an oem we need to capture right that is the most important signal and that means that if you are not there you are not in the game right in six or ten times the second is uh, uh, 40 percent of all spends are actually happening on print if you look at last year because this year has been a COVID, right now uh, the question is in the entire path to purchase print never came into the picture right uh, so in and, and and youtube uh actually has come in particularly in tier two and tier three cities right the role of youtube has actually increased uh, uh by almost 35 percentage points and i just want to quote here like uh, uh, uh the more 76 percent of new car buyers actually gave their preference to youtube which is 35 percent higher than last uh 2018 so again as we are looking at tier two tier three and also in rural uh, as internet more and more internet users come on come on come into the uh, uh, fold we are seeing that uh, being more local uh, and talking through more through videos right and driving people through uh, to the dealerships is very important in the in the entire game so if i simplify it from a, if i look at a funnel right at the top end of the funnel are oems they are like thanks to the leadership of Shashank and Tarun and Manohar, right? Like the likes of them are actually driving that mindset change and tech transformation at the OEM level. A lot need to happen at the regional offices level, right? Which is in the middle layer where there is not much action happening and that's where the lot of attention and focus is actually happening. And lastly, at the point of sale, as uh, Saurabh was mentioning, uh, only one third of the dealers are online. I think there is a need for the industry. And I would say you can look at this COVID as a crisis or an opportunity and I want to look at it as a crisis if the other two third dealerships are not online quickly. I think as an ecosystem, we need to really build that and only then uh, because the need for dealerships to be more digital and even OEMs is important uh, because the customer do not have patience to wait beyond even five minutes once he posts a query to a dealer right online. So it's really important for all these pieces to come together. And I'm very bullish uh, that if we acknowledge the power of YouTube as the new print uh, in ability to influence as well as drive dealers and uh, uh, and also uh, the dealerships are more active. I think this industry will see dramatic transformation than many other traditional industries and, and will be a shining light uh, for other uh, uh, omnichal industries to follow. Thank you, Baska. Uh, after the pandemic, one keyword has emerged is new normal so can we can we look at a completely changed uh, auto retailing because look at the prominence of digital that is going to come do we need those uh, large scale outlets available at the center uh, of the city where you uh, dealers have to spend huge money in terms of rent or they are owning it that real estate cost has been one of the biggest problem when it comes to automobile retailing and when digital or digital uh, that's a uh, combination comes up what would be the shape of new uh, automobile retailing that if you could give us a sneak peek into it how will the future of automobile retail look like shashank after all this we are hearing about the strong prominence of digital and rising cost of uh, real estate and uh, the uh, books of the dealers that we have seen always been stressed and they come back to OEMs for the support we have seen and you have been offering the support but that's always puts a pressure on the margin of the both the parties uh, with digital yeah. playing and how do you see the retail link changing I, I want a view from all of you all of you start with the shisha yeah so uh, clearly we have been discussing it's not just the consumer uh, uh, buying patterns which are changing a uh, buying journey which is changing but also i suppose the retail model itself will undergo a change um, having said that, I must tell you one uh, one data point 
where even in countries very developed countries where you have uh, most of the uh, buying uh, process happening through digital route 90% and above consumers actually make a visit to the showroom uh, in the course of buying the car or finally taking a car so it is not as if the digital when i mentioned about the digital landscape of uh, 3000 plus uh, outlets which we have on the digital uh, front it doesn't really mean that uh, we are going away completely from the physical space one second remember in areas in india which are smaller the rural areas or even tier uh, four five six cities people have a high uh, uh, high high uh, but they attach a lot of big uh, weightage to personal contact as well so while it's true that today rural urban the number of uh, internet users or people coming on to uh, for buying the cars or find starting the journey of buying the car physical cannot be entirely done away with and yes uh, we need to find a model which uh, makes uh, uh, the dealer more profitable in fact at maruti suzuki and i keep saying the number one criteria for any anything which we do for our um, retail uh, distribution we have to keep in mind the dealer profitability that is the number one priority for maruti suzuki and consumer of course we any everybody will follow that and on the point of that, uh, uh, not just the media spends, but on the infrastructure which you indicated, on the media structure, uh, for uh, when, when Bhaskar uh, uh, mentions uh, about uh, the the dollars being, um, the the money, the marketing spends being done, yes. For example, Mati Suzuki, we have to decide how much to spend on search, or how much on video, or how much on uh, on 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 social, or how much on display, and so on and so forth. We and I don't mind uh, telling that thirty percent of spends are on search uh, videos uh, and 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 social almost 20 20 each so uh, and that's the pattern across the industry yes so we need we need we know video is important i think uh, not only the uh, the infrastructure and the retail model itself will change because of the digital um, uh, increased virtualization our entire marketing strategy including media spends will also change yes navir Thank you, uh, Manohar. Do you what shape do you see of the automobile retailing going forward quickly? No, I would uh, go with what Shashank has said. Uh, irrespective of how uh, when people are moving into digital, as our uh, experience in Kia also shows, there are very few people who would go the entire whole hog. I mean, the, the entire journey uh, on the digital road as of now. But things would change. They will change definitely. But it will take some more time. I would put it to the fact that look, your uh, this is a very high involvement consumer durable. It, it represents a lot of uh, money, effort into the purchase. So you would like to see it physically before actually purchasing it. So I would say that there's always going to be a requirement for the brick and mortar, at least in the near future. Also, the another fact is like what Shashank said in uh, developed countries. Also, so far we are not seeing towards our shift towards fully digital. So, but if it does happen in India, possibly it will start happening in the metros where people already own two or three cars, and then it will become more of a more of a normal purchase for them, so to speak. And at that time, they might be willing to go on for the fully digital journey, or maybe in a, a person who is very very what uh, cut away from the like a, a remote uh, city where the outlet is not there and things like that. But otherwise, by and large, I think in the next ten years, I won't see a major shift towards digital vis-a-vis -vis the uh, your uh, brick and mortar shop but yes the once this starts happening the the deal of profitability will be uh, impacted hopefully positively because then he'll have a foothold in the digital space also where the investment is comparatively less but then at that time possibly other things also would change so very difficult to make a clear prediction on this thank you tarun i'll come to you uh, i just try to understand how do you see the you know uh rural or small towns or cities the mini india or the bharat or this kasba towns how are you going to tap them because we see a lot of emergence of digital users there a lot of internet penetration has gone and especially after 5g it will further be added so what would be your strategy to tap those kind of market uh via digital i think uh, <laughs> you raised a very very relevant point uh, nabil and uh, in fact, what we see is, as we can clearly see during the pandemic, it is the tier two, tier three, tier four towns where the growth is much, much higher than the metros. Maybe because of the 
lesser impact of the pandemic or maybe because you know the crop agriculture and all were much better the rains mm -hmm. have been good so but and, and the second thing is i believe digital will re remove the divide between urban and rural because when we were you know doing this click to buy and we were offering dealers ki, okay how many of you want to uh, come on click to buy what we found to our surprise was that almost all the rural outlets raised their hand up and said yes we want to we want to be digital and we are all that are becoming digital savvy so i think the journey towards uh, really reaching nook and corner of the country through digital has already begun google is playing a very key role various aspects here in fact one interesting aspect here is also the role of vernacular i think so far uh, you know we were talking about india and you're we talking about english or at best hindi but the way uh, vernacular has made a mark in uh, you know it, the usage and in terms of you know people really using these local languages to to do the searches uh up so many options for us and we get so many requests now from to really you know have our ads in vernacular languages or the videos and you know in fact you would have seen the uh, the 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 sharukh khan film which we had the corporate film you know now we had to show, uh, you know it in different languages so that you know uh, catering to the different of india so i think the the big the big uh, uh, you know size of a country and the different cultures gives us a lot of opportunity and i think thanks to the fast digitalization it has become much easier because i would say that it took years and years for companies to make a rural infrastructure at the same time what digital is doing is it is really reducing that time to really reach i think it's an advantage to all the in fact even even the new companies because they can reach faster at the same time the service infrastructure and that ability to really reach the customer will still come in handy and here i like to share some very interesting fact and avi just one last point uh, even at the peak of the pandemic when we were offering the customer that sir okay you have done this online now can you uh, take the delivery at home or will you like it at at your office the so customer said no car buying is still a very very emotional purchase decision for me i would like to bring my family to the showroom and take the delivery of the car so i think the importance of dealer cannot be undermined yes it will be evolving it will be changing they will have to much more own the customer they will have to customize their offerings they will have to be really owning the customer they will have to they know the customer much better than the oa so all those things will happen but they are they will continue to play a very important albeit a different role in times to come thank you tarun i'll come to you sort of before i go to uh, shashank sort of we heard that only one third of the dealers are having digital presence that's what the report talks about uh, if you go deep into the report it also talks about the opportunity that dealers have in terms of building their own brands because a lot of people are searching for dealers and uh, they might be uh, possible that there will be your brand presence or the strength of your brand that could pull customers to you so how are you planning to build your digital brand and how is it happening in your entire fraternity to attract customers how are you using this opportunity okay, nabil uh, i will answer this question of yours but if you allow me for 2 minutes i will also want to uh, put my points on with regards to dealer profitability and the the way how the business has changed today and what are the some of the things that need to be done yeah, if you put quickly I, in 30 Yes, not two minutes, thirty seconds. Yeah, I'll do it very really fast. I will do it within time. So oh. uh, we believe that while the business model is undergoing a tremendous change, there is an extreme need for all the OEMs to look, relook at the business model that a dealership typically operates in, with far higher margins than what we are currently getting. I believe that Mahindra has made a good start on that with the new business model that they have rolled out, and uh, it's a start, but nevertheless, it's a good start. and we believe that if other oems can also relook at that for the business in general it is extremely important for the survival and the growth of the dealership community with regards to your question about uh, the uh, one third of the dealers not be only being online and the rest not yet being online i believe perhaps uh, what bhaskar would have been referring to is that maybe the others are not as deeply involved as we would like them to be but today i believe that no dealers are already online maybe not formally maybe informally maybe in certain ways of their own but uh, 
in our understanding all the dealership community is being supported by fada also as well as all the dealer uh, oem partners who are suggesting to them on ways to move forward in order to make them more digitized and uh, we believe that a lot more investment is coming the digital way especially post covid because till now the challenge that we were facing was that our people were not ready to accept today that acceptance has come in at even the ground level that is the biggest change which has happened today and then it becomes much easier for us to push through any new decisions and new technology and that will definitely have a huge impact in the way we are it is already showing in urban centers in our dealership for example on how actually sales are happening and we believe that going forward the similar trend will also be there for all the dealerships thank you uh, shashank ji i'll come to you yeah. you are the uh, leader in this space i just want to understand do you think we are talking about digital strength or the might of digital taking over uh, tv or print do you think it will cut into the pie in terms of marketing spend that you had uh, do you think that will happen and what will be the pace number one number two how do you want to digitize your uh, you know uh, regional offices small offices operating in the uh, you know small cities and towns how are you going to implement digital more effectively because generally that's more of a regional uh, newspaper kind of advertisement and other regional tools were uh, you know used btl was prominent there how do you see that transforming in favor of digital and why and do you see the efficacy of digital there yeah, completely uh, nabil i uh, answering your first part uh, I, it's not that it will happen it's already happening i think uh, tarun gave uh, some uh, data it's uh, true for Maruti Suzuki as well. Our digital spends, which were just about six uh, percent uh, or so five uh, years back, uh, today they are upwards of thirty percent. So I don't see that coming down anytime soon. It's going to go up on, uh, only. However, if you look at the total spends uh, of the in the advertising, and I'm not talking only of auto industry, of the seventy-five thousand crore advertising market, you have digital still at twenty thousand crores. Uh, 40, uh, uh, 27,000 crore or so is still a television and the print is another 21, 22,000 crores. But I think there is a big change, a big shift, and uh, I think the spends will increase. Secondly, on your question about uh, the regional offices and the local dealers, uh, in our case, 90% uh, and more in, in our arena and Nexa channel, they are dealers are having the websites focusing on the hyper local uh, uh, activities uh, that is basically in the conversion phase so we have a upper end of the funnel where you have more brand awareness which is being done at the central level the consideration and the conversion part uh, which is uh, uh, which is being done at the dealer level and at the regional office level there also i see print being replaced to a large extent by digital in the hyper local the final conversion anyway has uh, sort of replaced uh, but in the even when you talk of print expenditure at the regional level, I see a digital share because digital allows you native advertising as well. Tarun mentioned about, and I think Manohar also mentioned about vernacular. Yes, it is possible. And also because native advertising is possible, I would say that even in the at lower end of the funnel, in the middle end of the funnel, which is the mid middle part of the funnel, which is the consideration part, uh, apart from the brand awareness which central uh, team do just from head office, in the middle uh, level, as also on the lower end, digital will play uh, increasingly greater importance. One point, Nabil, finally I want to make is regarding the use of digital for brand awareness also. There is that question mark which I think the industry is asking. And I think uh, now it is getting clearer that if you have uh, a, a campaign weighted by an always on campaign, so you may have an always on campaign on social or programmatic or, uh, or, 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 or uh, search, etc., weighted upwards by the brand campaigns, that would add also to a great uh, scores in the brand salience. Uh, which have currently been a question mark so people don't question the brand uh, uh, brand uh, preference uh, kpis through digital people question the brand salience scores through digital and i think now it's getting increasingly clear that even their digital will be a key and therefore i see a, a shift towards a digital spend from print as well as television so i'm i'm sure that that, that 
the report is such exhaustive that it will be very difficult to wrap up all the points or discuss every point in one hour. But I'll just touch upon two of the most important subjects that I feel must be discussed before we take, start taking questions from the audience. Bhaskar, we talk about sales largely when we talk about digital presence and all that with digital marketing and all. How services are being are, uh, are being influenced digitally? If you could give us some sense on that. How important is it to market services also on digital platforms, not just sales? No, I, I think uh, it's it's really important. Honestly, um, you know, not the OEMs, but the fact is car as a service, as a model has been the poster boy for the startup ecosystem for the last five years, right? Uh, now, I think there is a large scope and the consumers are already ready. Maybe there is a lot of opportunity to innovate. But if you look at uh, subscription, if you look at insurance, uh, if you look at accessories, right? All these aspects are very highly profitable businesses. And, uh, and I think there is a role to integrate all of them into one holistic experience, right? For example, when somebody buys a car, uh, will send a, like, welcome to the Maruti family, right? And, and, and so on, so with Shindai family and uh, Kia family, etc. So the thing is that you, you don't, don't sell a car, you sell, you, you own the customer, right? And the customer overall lifetime value. So I would look at it like, the beauty of digital is that instead of looking at different segments as hey, brand awareness OEMs will do, uh, you know, re regional will do some leads and then dealers will actually like convert the entire thing. I think there's an opportunity to kind of integrate through the entire chain with data at the core. So I would say that if, if this is the current uh, system, you have a choice. You can have bold digital on top of it. Right. Otherwise, you actually open up your system and keep digital. If you keep digital at the center and know the customer data and then, you know, build your business model on top of it, you can upsell, cross sell many of your services and increase customer lifetime profitability. And, and that's the power of uh, the tech transformation that uh, auto industry can have, uh, can actually embrace. And uh, I would love to see many of these uh, models evolve and increase the overall profitability of the industry and the dealerships, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and a very healthy ecosystem in the future. Thank you. Uh, before I start taking questions from the audience, I'll come to you again, Shashangji, once again. Uh, you talked yeah. about uh, used car business uh, and the report also talks about a huge inclination towards used car, especially those who have got their salary cut or their income has reduced. They are looking at, you know, used car options. Uh, how do you see digitally uh, influence going there especially in used car business has a lot of unorganized player there how can the organized player leverage the advantage of digital in terms of reaching out to their customers or boost their sales or boost their brand adaptability in the market uh, yeah Naveel, i think extremely important uh, point you have raised for the industry uh, from the industry perspective and i think if, if, if i'm right the google report does suggest that for uh, for used car, the usage online for uh, for for finding out or starting the journey is even higher than uh, what it is for new cars. And yeah. I, and I wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I I couldn't agree more intuitively as well because you know unlike new cars which are the same. So suppose somebody is interested in a Maruti Swift, whether he's in Coimbatore or Guwahati or Srinagar, he probably will find about this uh, Maruti Suzuki Swift is the same across uh, the specs are the same everything is the same but in case of used car every car is different and therefore and it is also that it is not very uh, if across geography the availability could be different and digital actually allows you to have that geographical accuracy to the extent that, the, the, and, and since each car is different, every used car, whether it is a buyer or a seller, would like to go through the digital route. And I see a big trend. Then looking at that, Nabil, what we have done is for our true value, we have now ha have expanded our digital platform immensely. So earlier we were thinking, let's do new car, let's do used car later. But actually, we find that the traction on used car, including such new digital tools available like a 360 degree camera or uh, such things, you can actually look at the car and uh, arrive even at a approximate selling or a buying uh, value. 
So I think going forward, I see even in used car, it is going to, and from Maruti Suzuki from the perspective, for the used car leads also, there is a huge traction. This has brought down our cost per lead dramatically, not only in new cars, but also in used car. Again, something which is very profitable from the dealer perspective as well. And as I said, dealer profitability is one of the key criteria for any decision that Maruti Suzuki makes. Thank you. I'll, I'll just, uh, before I take questions from the audience, one final comment uh, from Saurabh, because uh, we have seen this report has totally changed the perception of what was looking uh, like in the, we were expecting that the dealership will have a threat, but now it looks like more OEM and dealership will work together. But it will depend who plays the smarter role on digital platform, they will win. In such a scenario, sort of, as a dealer, what are the tools or technology you are adopting to stay ahead in the curve when it comes to as a, uh, comes to selling car or providing service as well? Because service is something that is not very strongly talked about, but the report suggests that there is a huge influence on service also when it comes to digital. So how are you changing your uh, strategy or do you think uh, uh, the, the trend is moving more towards it's going beyond sales and going to have strong influence on service also? No, so for us uh, at our place, uh, we have taken an approach that one, digital, how digital helps us be better at what we are doing is because we are a distributed model where we've got a lot of showrooms and a lot of service centers. So for us, in order to Earlier, we used to have to go to each location physically and talk and then only we can do anything. Today, it's become much easier to do it online with video calling and everybody can be involved in that discussion. And that helps us be more proactive for our customers. Decision making is faster. But for the customer end, so we have spent a lot of uh, resources and money on making this part of the process right, along with the digital infrastructure that we have created for ourselves. Apart from that, we have also started spending a lot more on personalized advertisements, personalized reach out to the customers at our in our area of operations. And of course, our OEMs also support us in making uh, those leads happen. And second part is uh, somebody mentioned here that you have to reach out to the customer within five minutes of the lead coming to you. So uh, that is what also is very important for us. And that is what we are also pushing at our place. These have helped us to capitalize on the inquiries that we have generated from our place and able to close it faster. Thank you, sir. About... Yeah, I'll now take questions because time is running out no, no. from the audience. So first question from Dharmendra Kapoor. He wants to know, will traditional way of buying at showroom also change to online? A complete transaction can happen online now because we have seen the report suggest that there is a search for that by car online. That's a search that has emerged. Uh, we, uh, how do you see this? Uh, uh, I'll start with uh, Shank. What's your take on this? Do you think now the actual deal happening? And then I'll ask Mr. Bhatt also to briefly answer this. Yeah, Nabil, I think we discussed this point and uh, today it is possible to have the entire buying, including the final payment and transaction to be completed on the digital platform. Uh, but uh, as we discussed, uh, probably because car buying is a very involved purchase, uh, it is something uh, probably that is the reason why a showroom visit, showroom delivery, might still be uh, be very important. Uh, and uh, we have seen that evidence in the case of uh, some of the more developed nations. And uh, I don't see uh, this happening so quickly in India, uh, the changeover completely to the, uh, to the buying online. Of course, the capability to buy online exists. Uh, and I think some, some consumers might do that. But uh, finally, the, uh, they have to take uh, the delivery, or most of them evidently prefer to take the delivery from the showrooms. Uh, there's other, I think, uh, uh, Dharmendra also wants to understand is there a constraint in terms of policy also, like there would be different road taxes and different uh, costs. So somebody buying online where the geography is not a, uh, not a matter of concern. So how will somebody pay or make the payment? What would be the method? Is there that complication also going to come? Manohar and Tarunji.
But there aren't any complications normally because it will be routed in any case to the dealer because the dealer will be uh, finally delivering the vehicle to the customer. So whatever the tax is applicable in the area where the customer resides, that will be applicable, whatever RT was there and all that. It's not like a Delhi customer will be serviced via from Lucknow or something like that. So there, aren't, uh, there ought not to be any uh, complications regarding tax at least. I think Tarun can add on to that. Here, I'll just like to mention one very critical situation. I think that is where still, you know, the documentation and all is and uh, Nabil and to answer Dharmendra ji, I think that once that becomes, uh, you know, Vahan portal is uh, actually portable to the entire thing, I think then the process will be totally seamless. I think we are all uh, hoping that very soon we'll see a day where even the registration can happen, you know, along with the buying uh, online. And uh, of course, so many RTOs are now doing it online, but still there are some processes, some documentation which are manual. And of course, there are some states where, uh, you know, the entire process is still, uh, you know, uh, not so much automatic. But I think that is the link there. But as far as the other processes are concerned, including the ex-showroom price uh, or the on-road price, and I think all those offers now, uh, OEMs have been able to manage it in one way or the other. And I think it is now quite seamless. And I don't think geographical boundaries is any constraint for anybody to buy. So next question comes from Isha Dhar. I would also like Bhaskar to join in this answer. This question is for the entire panel. Even though we see high uh, footprint on digital platform, but a big part of customer do call the dealership to close the deal. What are your steps to train sales executive to sell on phone or virtual negotiation? Uh, how can they do virtual negotiation as uh, uh, this will be a major influence as customer experience and choose the brand and dealership i think chatbots kind of things can play a role here so yeah who would like to take it first I, i'll take this i'll take oh. this because in the click to buy this is a very interesting option you know in the click to buy journey what hyundai has done is that we have an option where a customer online can have a a sales consultation and you know all that process of negotiation and deal can happen online you know so you can exchange the sales consultant will give his offer the customer can give his expectation and the deal can be closed off. i think this is a very big step this is a very big step towards making this own process online because somewhere the customer has to have that feeling of satisfaction that he's getting the best deal and he made a you know a bargain with the with the sales consultant uh, so, so yes, it's a very, very relevant point and very much doable now with the click to buy. And I'm sure all the other OEMs would also have uh, something or the other lined up for uh, to to solve this issue. And Bhaskar. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tarun. And uh, uh, just build a couple of builds on that. So first of all, uh, there are 100 million plus devices which are AR capable in the market today, right? And that number is growing uh, very fast. So there is an opportunity to innovate on technology to answer many user questions in a very, uh, uh, very digital uh, first way. The second is earlier we used to watch in films, right? The car salesman used to be this flashy uh, person and uh, uh, you know, like knows everything about the car. But I think tomorrow's car salesman and including today's car salesman, right? They need to know the customer much before the person walks into the store, right? He need to be more informed, more intelligent, high on relationships because every other practical detail uh, the customer is already researching uh, you know on, on the internet so there is a lot of opportunity to kind of give all the regular details through intelligent uh, chatbots and like again what insurance industry or a banking industry is trying to do answer as many queries as possible which are very regular queries right uh, uh, digitally and use dealership as a true relationship centers you know that personal uh, uh, very, uh, uh, yeah, uh, deeply conversations and relationships. So this is the person I can I can trust with, right? That that evolution will actually need to happen. Everything else can be digitized, but you uh, relationship part. Shashank sir, uh, there is a question for you from Rohit Nair. He wants to understand in the next ten years what percentage of your car is going to be sold without uh, going to physical dealership. Oh, uh, it's a very difficult uh, uh, question. I really don't know what percentage, 
but definitely um, it's going to it's not going to be a small uh, but 10 years is going to i suppose um, uh, we would have a large percentage of sales uh, online but again i i would say that delivery part i would still uh, obviously uh, people would prefer i still believe that india with the first time buyers being almost 50 percent and has been remained remained like that remarkably so for the last 20 years I think for them, car buying will be very much of a, a, a status sim, a thing, something which is very aspirational. They would definitely like to uh, go to the showroom ultimately to take delivery of the car. But yes, on the transaction point, I think it would be a very large percentage. And uh, Nabil, uh, if, I, if I may come in here, uh, this is a question Shashank and Tarun keeps asking me, <laughs> but I, we don't have an answer. Hopefully, the next gear shift report will talk about that. But uh, in the US, NADA, uh, uh, which is the organization, uh, I think their prediction is in the US, which is a very evolved market, by 2025, 30% sales will be online. Uh, I think, yeah. and maybe move ahead or, or maybe catch up to that, but I think uh, some uh, significant percentage will, will directionally happen, hopefully. Uh, so another question comes from Jagdish Balakrishnan. This is for the entire panel. What kind of analytics and data do you have on Indian consumers' progression to digital purchase? What level of permanency or how important would this be in the years to come? Who will take this? Uh, this answered by Google. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think the whole report is really about that. Uh, I, we, are, we are seeing increasingly uh, as more and more Indians are coming onto the internet, I think uh, consumers are expressing their intent both on the demand signals and so on and so forth are going to happen on digital. Uh, I, I, I'm really excited to share that the rural internet consumer growth is almost uh, four times that of the urban growth today on the internet. So I, I think, uh, uh, and, and our queries on auto are actually mirror the tier, tier two, tier three queries actually mirror tier two, tier three sales of automotives, right? So it's a very, very good signal. Search is a very strong indicator. And as we are seeing increasingly, uh, video will play an important role as internet increases a deeper uh, in terms of penetration. Uh, so I think the whole report has a lot of data points and uh, it will be there on the website. So I would encourage the gentleman to take a look. Uh, but uh, the whole car journey is online and the journey is beginning with digital and that is only going to go up. Certainly it is one of the richest, richest report that I have seen on automobile. Thank you so much uh, for bringing to us uh, Bhaskar this report. Next interesting question comes from Kunal and sort of I think your help is needed in answering this. There's a rising trend of consumers doing all their research online but do not drop a lead in order to avoid being hassled by calls by sales officers from the dealers. They prefer to directly visit showroom with the rising trend. How accurate is the digital sales attribution practice undertaken by most of the OEMs? Your thoughts? Saurav and uh, Shashank sir, both of you. So, or yeah. anybody uh, wants so to I contribute, Manohar can, yeah. So I think this is a real problem and uh, we as consumers, when we also go out and want to purchase something, we are very afraid to give our name and phone numbers to anybody because then we will keep getting calls and all that. Credit cards being the most notorious of, on this. But uh, what we have done is that uh, we have tried to reduce the physical phone calling to the customer on receiving an inquiry. We try to do more of it over a WhatsApp or an SMS or uh, some such uh, transaction point. And that we have seen that customers are more accepting, accepting to such a message or interaction module. And that has helped us uh, improve our conversions also when we are not calling up somebody three times or four times. And said, instead, if we send a message and if the customer is able to come back to us on their convenience with that message, because if somebody is a genuine buyer, they will typically look at what information has come to them and they will raise a query or something. And but we have to be proactive to respond in time and that has helped us understand how we can help it so this is one way to mitigate others uh, we do, still don't have a foolproof answer there is a process where you have to call a customer connect with him and if a customer has expressed his intent to connect with us that is the best thing that we can do but push messages whatsapps are the way to go 
for a large part of the transactions. Shashank, sir, your take. Yeah, so Nabil, I think uh, uh, it's a very, um, very important uh, uh, question because uh, the whole uh, whole process of uh, of trying for a conversion of a lead happens when the PI information is given by the consumer. Until that time, it is just uh, some sort of a un, un unseen query, which uh, obviously marketers use to put it in form of a, a data lake and then try to make sense of it later. But I think if a marketer is good and after the PI is available, actually, if he has a good view of that customer through different ways, whether it was interactional or whether it was transactional earlier, uh, like Marty Suzuki has two crore uh, uh, customers on which we have database, also uh, and hundreds of interactions or thousands of interactions, uh, either on insurance or finance or whatever, if a marketer is good and has a good uh, SVOC, the single view of customer, you can actually uh, make sure the way you approach the consumer is non-intrusive and the way that the consumer would like to have. And I think that is where the whole key is. What each individual has a different behavior, different requirement. If you have a good database about that customer, then probably you can have a very good predictive modeling of how soon a customer is going to buy whether he wants more information, whether he can be you know, persuaded quickly or should be wait later. I think those questions will be answered by how good your analytic tools are uh, after he has made the uh, PI. Okay. Uh, you want to add, Mr. Bhatt? Then I'll take another question because there are so many questions. I don't know if I start taking all the questions, it will be morning almost. So I'll pick few questions. Uh, next question, uh, I have it for Mr. Garg. Will digital influence decision of customers or will it uh, or will it can be an assisted selling agent? Look, I think it's a facilitate. Uh, digital is a, a means of really enabling the customer to and yeah. enabling some customers they don't want to have this hassle of, you know, going and, uh, you know, it's the, it's the issue is can i give the customer where he wants, when he wants how he wants so otherwise you are limited by the opening of the showroom timing you know you have to take a leave from the office maybe so i think what digital has done is you have taken the entire showroom purchase decision in the hands of the customer so it is all about customer convenience all us marketers talk about uh, customer centricity i think digital is has really shown us you know, to really meet those expectations of customer centricity, strategies of customer centricity, very, very. I would say uh, that it's, it's about convenience. I don't think digital can, uh, you know, if somebody does not want to buy, just because car is being available digitally, he'll go ahead and buy. I don't think that, that situation is there. At the same time, I think in terms of making it a very, very seamless thing, it's really, really a go. Uh, you know, a situation. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bhatt, there's a question for you. You got a good uh, uh, booking for your sonnet. You did well with your first product also. Uh, how much will you credit your success to digital marketing or digital platforms? So, like I said, we have uh, really invested a lot in the digital uh, digital space. So much so that uh, we were uh, also, like I said, uh, the pioneers in having a fully digital on uh, when uh, online journey available for the customer. So we believe that uh, we, it was more important for us since at the beginning our, uh, our brick and mortar dealerships were not fully ready maybe at that point of time. So we relied a lot on uh, the digital uh, route for that. Like, uh, like I think I told you, almost 35 to 40 percent of our bookings initially came online. So, so much so that, I mean, it's obviously because of the lot of effort that we put in on the digital one, on, on uh, getting our reviews on YouTube, on uh, engaging with the customer initially. Of course, when we started our journey, Kia was a very unknown brand name in the country. So from there, we actually progressed a lot because of uh, the major work that we had done initially on uh, the digital space, in the digital space. Thank you. Uh, uh, last up, there's a question for you. Uh, can you please shed some light on Google's role in connected vehicles ecosystem? 
I don't know if you would like to answer this, uh, such as uh, over the air, air updates in car e-commerce marketplace and telematics to increase overall um, CNV. Uh, uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll I'll pass the I think overall the whole Android Auto connected ecosystem. I think there is a, a longer discussion. Uh, but what I can say is that we are we are deeply solving for the user. You know, if you search for any car, right today, uh, the interface that you get on Google is very. It is not just that. Like if you have an entire unit which says that, hey, these are the list of cars and specs, and you know, you can, you can just open your phone right now and look for a and, and, and look for a, a Cias or you know any of the brand, and 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 it, it's almost like a one box where everything from a, for the solving for the consumer is at, at one place, right? By model, by design, configuration, videos, and all of it. So auto is one of the few sectors we have identified to deeply invest even from an engineering point of view to solve for the customer, solve for the uh, OEM and also solve for the dealer at the same time. So you will see more innovation coming in that direction, uh, uh, you know, to, to simplify the purchase journey because as we're sharing, this is one, one, one industry which has gone 100% uh, digital and has a, uh, we are doing our best to enable uh, uh, customers on, on this tech transformation. Uh uh, uh, Saurabh ji, uh, do you have any plan to give a VR uh, kind of experience to your customers in terms of uh, uh, also simulating driving experience and all that, uh, those kind of uh, facilities? Oh, we have already done that uh, in our Mahindra showroom where we have got a VR zone installed where we are able to provide a virtual driving experience since the last, I think, uh, one and a half years now. And we were the first in the zone to be to install this across all brands and uh, we have found there are some youngsters who are very in uh, kicked with that and some elderly gentlemen also like to see that but uh, our experience has so far been that customers also want to see the physical product it is just not enough to do it digitally uh, but uh, going forward with more and more digitization i believe that this will catch up more we are seeing more youngsters wanting to try it out. Abhi, right now, because of COVID, of course, people are a little afraid about germs, etc., and by a virus. But apart from that, utilization was happening. So we have to see how more we can do that going forward. Thank you so much. I'll take one last question. Uh, question, one question, and then we'll conclude. Uh, this question is for Bhaskar. Uh, what will be the role of Google in future of auto retailing? does uh, it want to amplify pitches facilitate comparison and overall redu reduce information asymmetry yeah no, i think uh, um, uh, i think we are truly uh, privileged to be playing a, a great uh, catalyst right in this whole transformation of auto industry and there is a long way ahead right we we are we feel um, we have to do a lot more for example uh, 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 as more and more dealers come online, right, there is an opportunity to kind of uh, drive higher transparency on inventory so that people understand, uh, you know, what exact model, color, whatever, right, to be able to find it their local local ads. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a lot of role in terms of driving capability of the dealerships and working with OEMs to do that. And as Shashank uh, San has actually mentioned, uh, still, uh, while the performance part of the story is extremely strong. Uh, the fact is digital is actually helping many uh, big brands, right? Earlier to build a strong brand, it would take 20, 30, 40 years to build a strong brand. Today, if you really do uh, a, you know, a good job, brands can be built much faster, right? And much more efficiently, right? And also brands can decline also much faster, right? So it, is, it is in a similar vein. So we would love to kind of up our game in terms of how we can enable uh, 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 deeper, uh, like Kia. Kia is a truly digital first launch, right? Like many more things will happen in the future. So we, we are, we're trying to solve for all, all these aspects and you can expect more from us in the coming quarters. And more importantly, uh, the analytics, sorry, more importantly, the analytics, I think uh, uh, the, 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 the core part is uh, a lot of customers are actually embracing our analytic solutions like uh, the ads data hub and uh, a GA360 uh, to be able to get this uh, single view of the customer. Uh, and we 
again the good news about auto industry is that the big the big guys like uh, maruti and hindai are the ones leading the charge so uh, uh, i think uh, we'll see a lot more um, acceleration happen over time let's talk about the consumer the car buyer at the end of the day we all are buyers also uh, shashank san i just want to understand we are talking about better roi in terms of digital as we increase the digital share the roi improves for you uh, in terms of your network or dealership that bring uh, become a bit more leaner or uh, become more efficient in terms of uh, you know investment also in all this scheme of thing do you think there is going to be price or cost advantage uh, for the people like us who wants to buy a car uh, will there be an advantage after some time uh, yes i think clearly uh, anything which brings down the cost at any point whether it is in marketing spends or transactions uh, transactional costs uh, or uh, by productivity increase or efficiency increase i think will ultimately uh, bring down the cost definitely i mean th that's clear and from a roi point of view i have already said that uh, our marketing spends we are much happier with the digital spends because it gives a very clear roi you you have cpcs or uh, you have uh, uh, the, uh, the cpls which are clearly indicating how much you are sa saving ultimately of course i would like uh, digital to give finally um, uh, uh, be related not so much to uh, not so much to uh, uh, direct response matrix as I, as i said earlier but i would love to have it uh, closely connected with the brand matrix and i think that's where we are headed to thank yeah. you so much it was uh, it is the right point to end this conversation i am sure all the viewers must have a lot to learn from this report this report shall be available on eauto.com you must go and read this this is one of the most insightful reports on the digital uh, influence when it comes to indian automobile industry and uh, the the stalwarts of the industry has already endorsed it and they have understood the change that is coming up in the automobile industry and the change is ultimately in favor of digital and a lot of spend is going to move towards digital and that could may result into some benefit of the customers also as the the roi is going to be much better thank you so much everyone for joining in today at this panel discussion on 30th uh, september at 3 pm we are going to unveil the same report on for the two-wheeler industry we are going to discuss with the stalwarts of the two-wheeler industry how the digital uh, influence is playing out in the two-wheeler space thank you so much till then take care goodbye thank you so much once again